Hi, this is Simon from Code2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up email signature rules on Exchange Server using Code2 Exchange rules. A little bit about the application itself. Code2 Exchange rules is an email signature management application for on-premises Microsoft Exchange Server. The reason you might need it is because Microsoft Exchange Server has limited capabilities in this area. For instance, on Exchange, you can't add email signatures directly under latest replies or forwards in email conversations. You can't display the signatures in users' send items folders. Exchange doesn't let you embed images and signatures as hidden attachments, and so on. The advantage of Code to Exchange rules is that it can do all these things. And it also offers a bunch of user-friendly features like the What You See Is What You Get HTML editor, where you can easily design email signature templates. For a more detailed comparison between Code to Exchange rules and Microsoft Exchange Server's email signature management capabilities, click the link in the lower right corner. All right, I already have Code to Exchange rules running on my computer. To start creating an email signature rule, I have to click the Add button over here. Type in the name of the rule. The name is going to be displayed in this list here. So it's good to use a descriptive name. Later on, when you have more rules, the names are going to tell you what a given rule does exactly and why I created it. In the comments box, I can provide additional information about the rule, its settings, and so on. Now let's proceed to the conditions tab. Both conditions and exceptions in code to exchange rules are based on logical clauses and can describe pretty much any scenario. In this case, let's say I want to create a rule that is going to add signatures with a banner to outbound emails sent by members of the sales department. So the first thing to do is to limit the scope of senders. I want the rule to apply only to the sales department. There are at least two ways of achieving this. If I have a group in Active Directory where all my salespeople are members, I can use the belongs to AD group condition. Another way is by configuring an Active Directory attribute filter, which is what I'm going to do. Now I have to choose a value that all salespeople have in common in Active Directory. An obvious candidate is the department attribute. So in Active Directory field, I'm going to choose department equals sales. Naturally, for this to work, the Active Directory accounts of salespeople in my organization must have this value entered in the department attribute. The value is not case sensitive and click OK. Earlier I said that I want this rule to apply only to emails sent to contacts outside of my organization, so I have to add one more condition. And this one is going to be message direction is outgoing. Over here I can decide how the two conditions are going to be related to each other. I'm leaving it set to AND because this way for the rule to be triggered, both conditions are going to have to be met by an email. The group and ungroup buttons are useful in more complex scenarios than this one. They serve the same function as brackets in logical clauses. Now let's move on to exceptions. As you can see, they are configured the same way as conditions. I could leave them empty, but just to give you a cool example of how they can be used, Let's say I want the sales department to have some control over whether the signature is going to be added to their emails or not. I can achieve this by creating an exception for emails that contain a unique phrase. Here's how it's done. In field, I have to choose body contains keyword. The program lets me set multiple values, but in this scenario I need only one. Secret keyword 135 should do the job. I can also specify whether the keyword should be removed or left in the email. I wouldn't want my external contacts to see the phrase secret keyword 135 in emails, so I'm going to check the remove from message box and click OK. With the exception set up like this, whenever a salesperson includes the phrase secret keyword 135 in the body of an outgoing email, this rule is not going to be applied. The next step is designing the signature template. First, I have to add the insert signature action to my rule. Now I could click Add it. This would open the program's editor where I can design the template from scratch. To watch a demonstration of how to use the editor, click the link in the lower right corner. The other option is to load a predefined template from the program's library. Let's see if I can find a signature with a banner.
This one looks nice. If I want to modify the template, for instance, to change the banner or anything else, I can click Edit. But I like the template as it is, so I'll just click OK. Finally, the last part of the rule, the Settings tab. What's interesting here is the time range setting. It lets you set fixed times when the rule is going to be active, or configure a recurrence pattern. That's all. As you can see, the rule is enabled by default, so I'm just going to click Submit Changes. And my signature rule is already working. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.